now we want to shift a little bit because we don't have that much time. And we know as a faculty, when we talk to each other, to our students, we focus only on the research or on teaching. But education, I believe, has another level, a little bit wider. Now, my question is, do you study books or, I don't know, papers from some other fields, let's say literature, philosophy, something not related to the separation to the chemical engineer? Yeah, no, good question too. Uh, I wish I had more time to read actually. <laughs> so there's a lot that I would, I would love to read um, outside of the typical scientific literature, uh, which I do read <laughs> all the time um, for the work that I do. Um, but I love, um, you know, areas in the classics. Um, I love uh, classic novels. Um, I really like uh, certain types of poetry. Um, Goethe, actually, so German <laughs> poetry is an unusual thing that I really enjoy. Um, I think a really uh, interesting topic and a very different type of perspective and reading than you get from scientific literature. Uh, I'm also a, a religious person, too, so I enjoy reading uh, books on religion, actually theology, which is a strange um, subset. Uh, of, of things that I, I enjoy learning more about. I think it's, it's fascinating to look at those types of philosophies and to contextualize the world from those different perspectives. Um, but definitely classic novels, um, you know, even things like poetry, I enjoy reading. Um, but I wish I had more time to read more, to get into those types of books. I think they're interesting and they're a great way of, of doing things that are different than the typical um, everyday tasks. So. Yes, I read. I wish I read more. <laughs> sure, sure. Everybody wants to do that. What favorite books? I mean, your favorite books. And if you want to suggest, let's say, three to five books to undergrad, grad, or I mean, other people, what are those? Yeah, and, and so this is this is challenging because I would say, you know, in my field, there are lots of books I'd recommend that you could learn about polymers you should read Flory's handbook if you haven't read that it's a 1945 book and it is just glorious sure. so Paul Flory uh, principles of polymerization is a really good really good book um, there are other types of books that I, I enjoy um, there are <laughs> some funny ones I, I love catch 22 uh, it's a strange book um, there's Confederacy of Dunces which is another bizarre <laughs> very funny very strange book as well um, I don't know if I'd recommend that so you know <laughs> read it maybe maybe don't nice. read it as well. Uh, and, you know, going to Goethe, uh, Faust is a, it's a phenomenal um, work of literature uh, to read. But these are, you know, far outside of the, the scientific field. Um, and those are a few, I don't think I got to five there, but those are a few different examples of things that uh, can really take your mind off of uh, chemical engineering. If you're looking for something different, uh, unless you go to Paul Flory's book, uh, <laughs> it's not too far out of the way. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, do you have any style of reading? You know, people have different, even for the scientific paper. I know some people say, hey, just focus on the abstract first. Some people say, hey, no, let's just go and detail by detail, line by line. So even scientific, non-scientific, do you have any style of reading? Yeah, I guess for style, and this may be the answer to your question, it might be a little different. Um, I, I'm somewhat old school in this sense because um, I read a lot of things on my computer now and I don't really like it. Um, there's something about actually holding a document and being able to turn the pages that you actually get connected with it in a way that you just don't That's get right. looking at Mendeley. And I love Mendeley, so this is not a, uh, <laughs> you know, an endorsement yeah. for or against that yeah, software. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that printing things out uh, can be really helpful for important papers that you'll read. And what I like to do is when I go through them, I sit there with highlighters. <laughs> I'll sit there with pens and pencils and you can actually use the margins to take notes. Um, and you can of course highlight things that you find interesting. And I found that it's really useful for those printouts or even better if you've got a hard copy book, go back and look at it a few years later and those notes actually tell a story of you know, how you viewed it at the time. And I've done this with old textbooks I had and I went back and I was like, wow, I didn't understand that concept at all. That's, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> but you can use that type of uh, style, uh, that type of technique, I, I think, to become more invested. It makes you think about what you're reading, and it actually makes the document look unique. And by looking unique, you can see, you know, maybe more to it than you would actually get quickly scrolling through on an iPad uh, or on your computer. Yeah, thanks. 
Uh, other question is that, and it involves me too. Nowadays, I think there are lots of distractions around us, even when we want to read a paper, even when we want to read a book. Sometimes even at the office, we think that, hey, we cannot focus. Is there any technique, any thing that you do personally when not that much high energy just to, I mean, change your energy and come back to the world? Yeah, I, I think that finding a specific location <laughs> that can help um, to get you in the right mindset is important. Um, this is definitely true of my office where I am now. Um, but something I, I used to do frequently, and I, I still do, um, well, pre-pandemic, uh, is actually go out to coffee shops. Um, it's almost like forcing myself to go somewhere where I feel that everyone can watch what I'm doing. <laughs> and you're sitting there, you're drinking coffee, and you're working on something where, you know, by the time that coffee is done, you're going to leave and you want to accomplish that task. And so oh. you know, I say that having a, um, a specific location that you can go to where you just think work, <laughs> that's really, really useful. It's very hard to do work uh, for me if I'm at home in my living room, uh, if the kids are around uh, playing, um, if there's a piano nearby and I want to play piano or if there's something else that I want to do. There are a lot of distractions and finding that sort of quiet space where you're just knowing when you go there, you're going to be doing work. Um, that's a good way to, to get into the right mindset. Uh, so that may have answered your question. It may yeah, have been yeah. but no, no, I got it. Thank enough. you. Thank you so much.